Let's take a look at smart events offered in Hike Vision cameras. These are also known as VCAs, which stands for Video Content Analysis. All of the smart events listed here make up the, the full smart suite, which is available with Hike Vision's Pro Series cameras. The smart events shown in green are included with the Value and Value Plus Series IP cameras. And the smart events in red and green are included in the uh, Performance Series cameras. These features are included in Hike Vision cameras at no additional cost. In order to get the best results, the camera has to be set up to get the best image possible. The scene shouldn't be too dark, so if it's a low light environment, you should use a Hike Vision Dark Fighter ultra low light camera. The scene shouldn't be too crowded. The target shouldn't be too large in the image, and there shouldn't be any moving obstructions in front of the target that you're trying to detect. The target motion should be obvious, moving across the image rather than away and toward the camera, such as down a hallway. And you should avoid scenes where light changes drastically. Now here are some general recommendations for camera installation. If it's going to be outdoors, it's recommended to mount 15 to 30 feet high. The optic axis should be at least 15 degrees below the horizon so that the camera is tilted down a little bit. The monitoring distance can be up to 164 feet or less. Now, if you want to see, if you want to use these smart events 164 feet out, you do have to have the correct lens. You can't expect to use a wide 2.8 millimeter lens and see targets 164 feet out and detect them. You would have to use a 12 millimeter lens at that distance. Now, for line crossing, let's take a look at how not to set it up and how to set it up. So, on the left, we have two bad examples where we have a line going across the middle of the image and people are going to be walking and they're going to be on both sides of the line at the same time. So the camera is not mounted in the correct position to detect people crossing the fence. On the bottom left, we have a wall with a line drawn on the top of it. Now there's not a lot of space between the line and the top of the image. And in order for line crossing to work, it has to detect the target before it crosses the line. So if someone comes over the top of the image, they may, may not be detected by the camera because there's not enough space there. So we have a, a red arrow with a frowning face going down, but a, a smiley face going up because there's plenty of space to detect them if they're going to cross the wall from the side closer to the camera. Now on the right side, we have two good examples. If you want to detect people crossing over the fence, you should have the camera mounted over the fence, looking down the fence with the line drawn on the top of the fence. Anything that crosses that line will be crossing over the fence. You could also have the camera looking downward from above, and then you could draw the line horizontally. Here's one more example where the target is too close. Being up close to the target like this effectively reduces the space between the line and the edge of the image. Even though the line may be, may be drawn in the middle of the image, in reality, there's not much space between that line and the edge of the image. With intrusion detection, it does not have to detect the target before it enters the intrusion zone. The target could simply appear out of nowhere or come through a door that's within the zone. So intrusion detection works better for indoor or smaller areas or where the objects are closer to the camera and therefore will appear larger in the camera view. Now when setting up VCAs, there are some settings. And here are some definitions for some of those settings. Some of the VCAs have the sensitivity, which sets the minimum size of the target. So a higher sensitivity will detect a smaller target. And you should set the sensitivity a little bit higher than needed so that you're sure to detect the targets of the size that you want. The threshold is the number of seconds an object must remain in the region to trigger their alarm for intrusion detection. With object left behind and object removal, the threshold can be from 5 seconds to 3600 seconds, which is one hour. Sometimes there is a percentage setting, such as with uh, intrusion detection. The percentage is the area of the drawn zone that the object must occupy. When the percentage is set to 50, the alarm will only be triggered when the moving target occupies at least 50% of the protected area. These settings can be used to help eliminate false alarms generated by targets that do not fully enter the protected area or by small, unimportant objects, such as animals. 
With line crossing, these are the steps to set it up. You can do this if you have a high vision NVR directly from the NVR and it will apply the settings to the camera and that would be the recommended method. So you would go to Smart Event in the NVR, select Line Crossing Detection, select your camera, then enable it with the checkbox, and then choose to draw the line and draw the line by clicking one point and the other point of the line. You can set the sensitivity and the direction of detection. It can be bi-directional, triggering whenever an object crosses either direction, or it can be unidirectional so that it only triggers if an object crosses in one direction. That way you can detect targets going the wrong way or a certain way, and then you can trigger you know, recording or other notifications based on that line crossing. And here's a sample video of line crossing. The video has the objects outlined in green boxes as it detects them, and when they cross the line, they turn red. The line is normally blue, and it turns red for a few seconds after an object has crossed it. Intrusion detection is set up in a similar way, except you draw a four-sided shape. Again, with the intrusion detection, we have some additional settings, such as a threshold and then a percentage. So if we set the threshold to three seconds, we can allow objects to cross through the zone without triggering it. But if they stop in the zone and they are doing something for more than three seconds, then it will trigger and it can notify you of that event. Here's a sample video. So with this sample video, the threshold is set to zero seconds, so it triggers immediately when they enter or when they appear in the zone. Region entrance is kind of similar to intrusion detection. The difference is that it has to detect the object before it enters. It's kind of like four line crossing events, and it only triggers when the object enters into the zone. So here's a sample video of region entrance detection. So if something just appeared within the zone or stays in the zone and keeps moving around, that will not trigger it. It only triggers when something enters the zone. So it's good for protecting a sensitive area. Here we have region exiting detection, which is the opposite of region entrance detection. Here the object has to be detected within the zone and the event is triggered when the object leaves the zone. So the object can be in the zone and continue moving around and it will not trigger until the object leaves the zone. Next we have unintended baggage detection. Again, you draw a quadrilateral shape, and this will detect when an object has been left behind. There is a threshold setting, so you can set it from 5 to 3600 seconds. Let's take a look at how that works. So we're going to throw an object in there, and it's going to be left. It's going to de detect that object, and after the threshold number of seconds, it will trigger the event. There we go. Next, we have object removal detection. So if there is a static object in the scene and it gets taken away, the camera will detect that something is missing. And after the threshold number of seconds, it will trigger that event. Those are just some of the smart events that High Vision offers. We took a look at line crossing, intrusion detection, region entrance, region exit, unintended baggage, and object removal. They additionally offer counting cameras, heat mapping, scene change detection, defocus detection, and audio exception detection. With audio exception detection, you can detect an increase or decrease in the sound level. So if you had a quiet environment and something made a loud noise, that could trigger the event. Or you could set it up if you have a noisy environment, such as with machinery, and then it becomes quiet, and that triggers the event so that you're notified if the 
machine or air conditioning unit, for example, shuts off. Additionally, Hike Vision offers PTZs with smart tracking. And some of the VCAs, such as line crossing or intrusion detection, can be linked to smart tracking. Let's take a look at an example of that. So here's a PTZ with a line crossing event set up. And when a target crosses that line, the PTZ will start smart tracking that target. So automatically zooms in and continually adjusts the zoom and follows the target. So this gets you a close-up image with more detail of the target, no matter where they go within view of the camera. It can be set up to track the object for a set number of seconds, or once it loses the sight of the target, it will go back to the original position. Let's take a look at another example early in the morning. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.